Section 1.4 is rational expressions, which you definitely did last year. We're going to go through what a rational expression is, and then we're going to go through some examples of simplifying, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, and working with complex fractions. So first of all, what is a rational expression? Here are some examples of rational expressions. So x minus 1 over x plus 5 is a simple rational expression. 3x over x to the 4th is a rational expression. That's not simplified, but it is a rational expression. x squared minus 4 over 2x to the 5th minus 1. So what is a rational expression? I have a polynomial in the numerator, polynomial in the denominator. Okay, what are we going to do with them? Like I said, mostly we're going to simplify them with all the different operations. What we have to worry about is, because I have a fraction, um, we're going to look at restricting them also. All that means is you got to look at when does the denominator equal zero, because the denominator obviously can't be zero. So the first two are just simplifying each. Okay, so just like I simplify a regular fraction, I need to find common factors. So from what we just did, we're going to factor the numerator and the denominator, all of our factoring. So this is just a trinomial, plus 3 plus 3 over x plus 3 times x minus 3. Common factors are x plus 3, so that cancels. My answer is x plus 3 over x minus 3. Now, state restrictions, that just means what values would actually make this undefined. So if I look at x plus 3 and x minus 3 before I cancel, x cannot be plus or minus 3. If it was, the original problem wouldn't exist. It would be undefined. Next one, the numerator I can't factor, so I'm going to leave it as 3x squared. The denominator, I can take out a 3x, and I'm left with x squared plus 7. So now the 3's cancel. x squared over x, I'm just going to be left with x over x squared plus 7. Now I can't cancel the x and x squared, okay, because x squared plus 7 is one factor. Only can cancel factors. My restrictions, I go back to before I canceled. Um, the 3x out in front would tell me that x can't be 0. And x squared plus 7 don't have to worry about because that would be imaginary. So I do not have to include imaginary values. Next one, I'm going to factor numerator and denominator. So I have x and x multiplies to negative 3, adds to negative 2. Denominator, x and x, multiplies to positive 12, and adds to negative 7 would be minus 4 minus 3. x minus 3 is cancel. Final answer, x plus 1 over x minus 4. What are my restrictions? x cannot be 4 or 3, 3 or 4. That's what would make the denominator 0. Next one, numerator. Obviously, it doesn't factor. Now, the denominator is different to squares. It's just in the reverse, so it would be 1 minus x times 1 plus x. So now x minus 1 and 1 minus x do not cancel as they are. But I'm going to show you if I take a negative out of the numerator, it becomes negative x plus 1, which is 1 minus x. So now that cancels. And I'm left with negative 1 over 1 plus x. In general, anytime I have the difference in opposite directions, 2 minus x, x minus 2, 5 minus a, a minus 5, you can cancel them as long as you show the negative uh, in the numerator to show that they canceled with factoring out a negative. Now if I go back, guys, and look at what are my restricted values, Look at both of the factors before I cancel. X couldn't be plus or minus 1. Next, I have multiplication. Okay, the first one, I'm going to simplify each fraction first. So if I simplify, I would end up with 3y squared over x squared. If 
I just simplify that, times y over 6x. I can multiply them as 3y cubed over 6x cubed. And now 3 over 6, I can simplify to 1 over 2, so I'd have y cubed over 2x cubed would be my final answer. And then if I look at restrictions, I look up here, the original values, sorry I highlighted that, both x and y can't be 0. So x can't be 0 and y cannot be 0. Next is still multiplication, a little more complicated. So I have, I'm going to factor, so I'd factor 2 out of the numerator, so I'd have x squared minus 5 over x plus 1 times x minus 4 over, take a 4 out of the denominator, and I have x squared minus 5 in the denominator there. So now I look at what can cancel, so x... Alright, so the x squared minus 5's cancel, and I'm left with 2 times x minus 4 over 4 times x plus 1. 2 over 4, I can cancel to 2, so I'd just be left with x minus 4 over 2 times x plus 1. Go back before I canceled my restricted values. This would tell me that x cannot be negative 1. This would give me, so x can't be negative 1, and the second would give me plus or minus square root of 5. Again, what are those values? Those are the values that make the denominator equal to 0. Now we move to division. Only difference with division is just like regular fraction, you divide fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to factor everything. So I'm going to have x x, I need to multiply to 20 and add to 8, so I'm going to have minus 10 and plus 2 over this. I'm just going to take a 15 x to the third out, and I'll be left with x minus 10 times, so now I'm going to flip, whoops, I'm going to flip this when I factor because I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. So now the numerator is actually going to become x and x, x and x, uh, minus 9 and plus 2, and denominator will be x times x minus 9. Factoring everything. Now what cancels? Common factors, minus 10, minus 9, and I'm left with x plus 2 squared over 15x to the 4th. When I restrict now, I need to look at the denominator, this denominator, and actually also this numerator. Why? Because that numerator started as the denominator. So x wouldn't be able to be equal to what? 0, uh, 10. I'm just going in order of the problem. So 0 here, 10 here. Uh, 0 again, don't need to write it again. Positive 9 or negative 2. I could write them. Descending order, negative 2, 0, 9, or 10. So there are my restrictions. Moving to addition, uh, when I want to add to two fractions, I need a common denominator. So what is my LCD? At least common denominator would be x minus 1 times x plus 2. So the first fraction would mean x plus 2. So I'd have 3 times x plus 2. Uh, that would be the numerator of the first fraction over x minus 1 times x plus 2. So what have I done? I've just multiplied the first fraction by x plus 2 over x plus 2. Plus, second fraction needs an x minus 1. I already have x plus 2 there and x minus 1. So that's just showing that I have multiplied by x plus 2 the first fraction and x minus 1 the second fraction. Now I can actually combine the numerators, so I'd have 3x plus 6 plus x squared minus x over the common denominator of x minus 1, x plus 2. Now I want to simplify, so the numerator becomes x squared plus 2x plus 6 over 
x minus 1 times x plus 2. If this factored, I would, but this doesn't factor any further. So there's my answer, and my restrictions are what? x cannot be negative 2 or 1, because those would make the denominator 0. Same idea, just a little bit harder. So before I determine least common denominator, all your denominators need to be factored. So first I'm going to factor this as x times x plus 7. Now I see that my least common denominator is going to be x times x plus 7. So the first fraction actually doesn't need anything. The second fraction is going to need to be multiplied by x over x, and the third by x plus 7 over x plus 7. So my numerator is going to be two, negative 2x squared minus 5x plus x, sorry, plus x times x minus 2 plus uh, x plus 7 times 2x minus 3. That's my numerator, all over x, x plus 7. So again, I didn't multiply the first fraction by anything. We left the same. The second just needed an x, and the third needed x plus 7 in order for this to be my common denominator. Now I just need to do a lot of simplifying. So I have, what, negative 2x squared minus 5x plus x squared minus 2x plus... I'm going to FOIL over here, 2x squared minus 3 plus 14 um, is minus 3 plus 14 is plus 11, minus 21, all over x, x plus 7. Uh, now if I simplify this, these are going to cancel, so I'm just going to be left with x squared. And combine all my like terms. Negative 5, negative 2 is negative 7, plus 11 is going to be plus 4x. And my constant will be minus 21, all over x, x plus 7. Now, look at the numerator. Does that actually factor down now, guys? If I look at it, I have x and x, 21 is 7 and 3. So plus 7 minus 3 over x, x plus 7. And I can actually cancel, so my final answer would be x minus 3 over x. Now restrictions, I can just go back to the original problem that's factored and look. Look at your denominators here, okay? Or look at your least common denominator. So x cannot be 0 or negative 7. So x cannot be negative 7 or 0. Okay. Last thing, compound fraction. So all a compound fraction is, is I have fractions within a fraction. So I could just look at the numerator, sorry, and add x over y plus 1 with common denominator. So my common denominator, guys, would be what? y, so this would be y over y. So this would turn into x plus y over y. That's just my numerator. My denominator is 1 minus y over x. So that would turn into x over x. And I would have, what, when I combine those, that would be x minus y over x. So that's what I have. Numerator, denominator, now it just becomes a division problem. What do you do? You multiply by the reciprocal. When I'm dividing two fractions, I would have x plus y over y times the reciprocal of this, which is x over x minus y, when I simplify this. And so what am I left with? I'm left with x times x plus y over y times x minus y. What are my restrictions? Uh, X can't be 0. Y cannot be 0. 
And then if you look at x minus y, what would make x minus y equal 0? Well, if x equaled y, so x could also not equal plus or minus y. Those are my restrictions. So compound fraction, you're going to look at the numerator. You're going to combine um, the fractions of the common denominator. Then you're going to do the denominator. Then you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay, so that's a quick review on all of our rational expressions. Now you should be able to do some practice.